Hello artists, if you've been on my channel long, you know I love creating homemade surfaces and this is one of my favorites. I'm gonna teach you how to create a value study and then use a homemade concoction to create your own soft pastel surface on affordable watercolor paper. This is truly one of my favorite techniques and I think it's great for artists who are not only wanting to budget, but also to have the freedom to create pastel surfaces with a unique and painterly feel. So let's dive right in and talk about these supplies. You don't have to have all of the supplies that I will list here and feel free to get creative. The surface I used was a hot press watercolor paper made by Arches, but you could use any type of watercolor paper or water friendly surface for this process. Of course, you'll need some brushes. I like Princeton Heritage watercolor brushes. Oh, and I'll have links to all of these products in the description of this video. To create a value study, I used Cretacolor Aqua Brick. It was the first time I'd used this product and I really liked it. The magical concoction for adding texture to our surface so pastels will apply is a combination of Golden Fine Pumice Gel. It's what will give the texture and a beautiful color by Golden Fluid Acrylics called Quinacridone Nickel Azo Gold. Now they don't make this anymore, but I'm going to give you two colors that will combine to make a similar color or any golden color you have will work. There's another product that I use to apply some darker values. Again, you do not have to have this product, but it's a great product actually for making your own pastel surface with just this product. It's called Color Fix Primer. The color is terracotta. Of course, we'll need some soft pastels, and I didn't use only these pastels, but I used quite a bit of these Unison pastels. It's their 30 half stick set. It is really a great little set and really a great set for beginner artists as well. The focus this month in Monet Cafe Studio and on my Patreon page has been window light. I've already shared a few tutorials of actual window paintings, but I wanted to capture the subtle light that often comes from a window, and I thought these apples was a perfect selection. By the way, the reference image is from unsplash.com, and if you're a patron of mine, you'll get my cropped version that you saw here. I began with a sketch, and my pencil's so light that you can hardly see it, but you'll start to really see the sketch when I uh, begin to add the value, the, the dark uh, color to it. And I freehand sketched this, whereas the last two tutorials, I gave a lot of tips on how to create things accurate perspectively uh, by a grid method, but I often prefer a hand a sketched method. I think it has a more artistic feel and a painterly feel and that really getting good at that actually just comes from a lot of practice. So sketch away, keep a little sketch journal and sketch at every opportunity you can get. And here's this product I mentioned. I have never used it, even though I've had this little set for about a year in a drawer. It's called Creta Color. I thought it was Creta Color. And it is an aqua brick. It's basically a gouache paint. And it's just these 10 colors. And believe it or not, even though I'm such a color freak, I just used the black just to create a value study. Now you'll need some water, uh, clean water preferably, I did clean out my water, and a watercolor brush. This one's actually different than the one I showed at the beginning on the supply list. It's a Princeton Velvet Touch brush. It's a round number eight. I'll have that in the description of this video. Now, as you can see, I'm using the black in different consistencies. I'm speeding this up because without speeding up the sketch and this, this video would be so long. Um, so I am thickening it up in places where I see the dark values, basically in the little crevice areas where apples are next to each other or there's shadows underneath it. Uh, you can instantly see where the light source is coming from, from the right side and by the, the highlights on the apples. And so I'm looking for those subtle variations in value. And you basically just control how light or dark this black gouache color is by how much water you add or how, um, little water you add. And it really did create a nice and very loose underpainting. I really liked the offset, um, how I cropped this image with the apples over to the left and um, those uh, beautiful leaves coming out from the stem like it was just picked off the tree. And this is really just a value study. Like I keep saying, use whatever product you have. You could use watercolor. You could use just black gouache. Um, and the reason I chose to do this is I wanted to set something in place that would be a bit permanent before adding my homemade pastel application. 
If I had used pencil or charcoal, it wouldn't have stayed in place as I go to apply my next wet medium, which is basically making my own homemade pastel surface. And pardon me while I take a quick little station break to share with you something that's so exciting for me. I have recently created a book that is a combination of two of my loves, my love of painting and my love of scripture. I call it Artistic Inspirations, and it is filled with paintings paired with some of my favorite verses and some writings to inspire you. It is available on Amazon. I'll have a link for it in the description of this video video and as a little card right up here in the corner. Because it's around the holidays that I'm sharing this lesson, I thought it would not only be perhaps a great gift for you, but a nice little stocking stuffer for a loved one. And now let's get back to this lesson. Now I'm finished with the underpainting and here we go. Because this is watercolor paper, you can see that it has warped just a little bit and I forgot I actually really wanted to tape it down before I even started. So I'm doing it now. Uh, again, I'm gonna be applying another wet medium and this will just keep it in place. This is a clear tape. I can't even remember what it's called. I've had it for so long, but use whatever tape you have. Even masking tape would help. Now here's the magic sauce for creating a surface that will actually receive soft pastels. This is golden fine pumice gel. It's a gel. It does dry clear, even though it looks gray here, and it has a little grit to it. I want to tone it a beautiful golden color, and this is one of my favorite colors. Sadly, it's discontinued, but I'm going to give you some color substitutes. Now we're going to mix one part color to three parts fine pumice gel. I just used a tablespoon and put in three basic tablespoons, um, not very full tablespoons, and one part of this quinacridone nickel azo gold. Now, while I'm mixing this up, I wanted to share with you that because this color is discontinued, the Golden Paint Company has two colors you can combine that they offer that will make a similar color, but you don't have to use this particular brand. Anything that's a pretty golden color will work. I just happen to like this color. I'm going to use a sponge, just a regular sponge for application. And I just put a little bit on the sponge and I'm going to apply in a circular motion. Now I call this technique the Rita Kirkman technique. I have to give this artist credit. She's how I learned of this technique. If you haven't seen her work, she's fantastic. She does amazing animal portraits and all of her paintings have this gorgeous golden glow underneath it and she uses this technique all of the time. Now I've let it dry and I want you to hear how sanded this is. And it's this texture that's going to allow the pastels to adhere. I simply save any leftover that I have to create more surfaces in the future. Now here's the next product I talked about. You do not even have to do this stage if you don't want to. It's called Art Spectrum Color Fix Primer. It comes in all these different colors. This color is called Terracotta. It's similar to the fine pumice gel, but it just has color because it also has the texture, the little bits of sand and grain. Now this is something else that Rita Kirkman does. She uses a type of sponge, not like this one, um, but she also uses this product to get the dark values like I was pointing at in the reference image. So I started with a sponge. You'll later see I switched to a brush. I couldn't get it to apply as uh, in the areas as fine uh, detail as I wanted. Um, but all I'm doing here is I know I'm covering up my um, value study a bit, but I'm using this dark terracotta color to put anywhere I see dark values. Now where I want to lighten it up a little bit, can you see how I just added some water to it? I got me a plastic um, Tupperware tray. And uh, when I want to lighten it up, like you can see here, I just add a little bit of water to it. And you can see now I am creating a value study using this terracotta color. Now you could jump right to using soft pastels for this and just use a soft pastel of a similar color. Um, but the reason I wanted to use this is because it also still has some texture to it. So I'm still increasing my layer ability by adding this product that also has a little bit of grit and texture to it. Here I've jumped ahead a little bit to the final application of this product. And now it's time to apply soft pastels. This is the little unison set of pastels I mentioned in the supply list at the beginning of this video. It's a 30 half stick set. I liked the reds that it had in the set and um, some of the greens as well. 
The pastel application of this video here on the Monet Cafe YouTube channel will be a speed version. If you would like the slower speeds with all of my commentary, you might consider becoming a patron of mine on my Patreon page. It's so easy and it's affordable, only $5 a month, and you unlock hundreds of lessons and so much content. Plus, I love the fact that it's a beautiful community of artists. I get to see your work and it's a wonderful, happy place. And if you're enjoying this lesson and the hundreds of other free lessons I have here on the Monet Cafe channel, you might want to consider buying me a coffee. No, it's not an actual real coffee. It's just a neat way you can leave a tip for this video to show your appreciation, and I would appreciate it. I started by applying some of the beautiful reds that are in that little unison half stick set and they were three values that I used primarily. And then as you can see, I added some darks to the apple stems and in the shadows. And now I'm using a beautiful little teal color in three values, a medium value, a light value, and a little bit of a darker value, just to get some of the highlights, shadows, and darks in this bowl. I loved the color of this bowl and I kind of punched it up a little. Now the Apples actually had a little hint of some green in it. You can see I added that. And uh, using now a darker red, almost like a, a brick red for some of the really deep shadowy areas in the apples. And I found some lovely greens of different values, a darker green like you see here, a middle value green, and a lighter value green to get some of the leaves. While I paint here, I wanted to share with you some of the reasons why I love creating a surface like this. I find that not only is it uh, more affordable, I mean, I'm working on watercolor paper and uh, that's definitely less expensive than pastel papers, but I love not only the golden glow, it's just gorgeous, but also your freedom. When you make your own pastel surface like this, you end up with a lot of texture. You could use different brushes with stiffer bristles and create a very textural piece with a lot of energy, but I find that that the surface really does have an end result that is very impressionistic and painterly. And if you're new to soft pastels or a beginner artist, I know it can feel like you're gonna get lost in the sea of products and techniques and so much to learn, but trust me, if I can do it, you can do it. I'm totally self-taught as an artist, learning everything I know from videos online. I've only been to one real life pastel workshop in my life, so I just wanna encourage you, it is very possible and achievable with baby steps. And I also encourage you to have fun along the way. Don't put so much pressure on yourself. I say this because I'm preaching to myself too. That's what I do sometimes. So uh, try to enjoy this beautiful journey. One of my goals with this piece was to create a painting that was just very loose and impressionistic. And it was a lot of fun. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it blessed you. Again, consider becoming a patron if you want more content and to become part of my Patreon community. If you like this video, leave me a tip. It's called Buy Me a Coffee. The link's in the description below. And as always, friends, God bless and happy painting.